name's John Houston Stam. I'm here at the Dam Show 2015. And I'm here with Chris Byrne, who represents the Dan Electro Guitar Corporation. And Chris, I have one question for you. Yes, sir. How far back does Dan Electro go? Well, Dan Electro originally came on the scene in 47. 1947. Yes, sir. Nat Daniels. He created a whole plethora of amazing instruments that still used today. You know, when I was a kid, I remember that you could buy those at Sears and Roebuck. Is that the first outlet for them, or could you remember how far back the, it, the franchise that, might go? Well, good point. It really was the first mass production of the Dan Electros, the Silver Tone line, which we've actually reissued over here for a certain extent. You'll see those. Okay. But uh, absolutely, that is the first widespread use of the Danos. Everybody's first guitar, Hendrix, Clapton, all the guys, all the big guys had Danos. Let me just, uh, since I'm a guitar player, I know a little bit about design and construction I know that you know Fender had a Stratocaster with a certain type of single coil pickup Gibson had a humbucker type pickup but it seems like uh, Dan Electro was famous for what they call a lipstick pickup right is that is, or is that not true absolutely it was a cost-effective maneuver by Nat Daniels to, to put these pickups in a lipstick too we got them cheap it created a whole new unique vintage sound Wow what a bit of information that is. And here's another interesting question I have for you. You know what uh, masonite is or a, a, a pegboard, right? Yeah, we have the best old growth masonite around. <laughs> <laughs> no. no such thing, right? Yeah. But, but explain to everybody what that type of material is. Well, really, it was almost a 50s countertop material. Right. We, and we sandwiched a pine center block, or Nate Daniels, the original guy, and he sandwiched that masonite but with a pine center block, which really created a unique, unique sonic and resonance. Of course, it's co it's cost friendly too it's for manufacturing, right? Cost friendly and a unique sonic, completely. Because, like, I know Fender used to make their necks out of a two by four, so right. it's, a, it's the same sort of idea, right? It is very much cost effective. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, it turned so, out amazing. So, uh, in uh, in retrospect, in my thinking, musically speaking, now Jimmy Page would be the first guy that I would think of that really popularized. Uh, Jimmy was great. He bought 10 of them for Christmas presents uh, around 2000. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go back further, though. Yeah. Some of those early recordings, I think Black Mountainside, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Cashmere, Black Mountainside. Jimmy really was a big, big factor in putting Dan Electro on the map. There's yeah. no doubt about yeah. it. Yeah. Well, it's a unique sound, isn't it? Absolutely yeah. a unique sound. It isn't a Gibson. It isn't a Fender. It's a Silver Tone. It's a Dan Electro. It's whatever, right? Absolutely um, unique. What uh, What is your... Uh, price point what's your sales point with the modern uh, the modern that the most expensive Dan Electro is 499 retail oh so it's pocketbook friendly right there yeah you've right got there. you guys have kept it in that market right absolutely yeah that's interesting how about uh, can we get a look at some of these guitars behind us absolutely uh, tell us uh, I mean, how, how is this any different than the uh, original uh, silver, uh, not silver tones, excuse me, the Dan Electros? Well, this is a 59 uh, NOS, so this model in particular, we did a design that is really similar to what Jimmy had done. Okay. We don't call it a Jimmy Page model or yeah. anything like that. So tell me, uh, Chris, what is similar or different between this and maybe the original model that came out? A couple different things. We've added our own style bridge here. Kind of similar. I, I can won't see it's say it's got same. a tunematic. Uh, you can so you can intonate it. To Absolutely si similar to more that. of a, a Leo Kwan badass bridge uh, from the 70s. Yeah. It's not that though. It's our design, and we've also blocked it right here, which is actually something Jimmy Stren did. Strengthened. Yep. Yep. Blocked it and strengthened it there. Yeah. Really is an amazing open resonant sonic. But this design is is almost identical, right? Otherwise identical. Would you call these piggyback controls? Yeah, we call those concentric knobs. You got the volume yeah. and the tone there. Uh, yeah. Your tone, I'm sorry, on top. And this material, on the, it's the same as it was, right? Same as so it just was. just a plastic... Uh, we, we call it an ostrich design. We twisted the, the, the little cosmetic a little bit with an ostrich skin design there. Unbelievable. Hey, hey we really want to thank you here at... Uh, you got it, man. Bluesy News is at the NAMM Show 2015. Thanks, John.